What is going on guys? It's Scott with Never Hedge and today we are doing a battle of the ETH killers and we are putting Avalanche, Solana and Polygon head to head and see which one is going to be the true Ethereum killer. We're going to break this up into a couple of different segments. Uh, we're going to compare market cap, functionality, security and overall community. So uh, let's get right into it. First, we're going to start with the market cap. So Solana's market cap is uh, 26.927 billion USD. We've got a circulating supply of uh, 323 million SOL. Uh, I believe that started at 225 million and is uh, a little bit inflationary there. The total supply is 511 million there. Avalanche, on the other hand, fixed supply, and we have a circulating supply of 266 million with a market cap of 18.873 billion. Second biggest there, total supply 395 uh, million, 395.8 million there. So second place. Uh, third place is Polygon with a market cap of 10.68 billion. All these are very good. Uh, circulating supply is 7.69 billion. Max supply and total supply are both capped at 10 billion. So Solana uh, way out ahead in the market cap domain here. And before we get any further into the video, I got to pump the Discord quick. Uh, the Neverhead Discord is one of the best and fastest growing communities out there. Uh, we've got a couple of different channels here, one for sports betting. And right now we're focusing on uh, MMA and the UFC Vegas uh, 50 one that is going off this weekend in the UK. And then we also have the NFTs, crypto and stocks channel. That is exactly what it sounds like focused on NFTs, crypto and stocks and ton of engagement there, tons of research and uh, people sharing opinions in there. We've got a great community building. Uh, hop in there if you can put a link in the description below for you. Moving on to functionality. We're going to tackle this a couple of different ways here. First is going to be the transaction speed. So I found this uh, really good graphic here of all of the major cryptocurrencies or all the, the really the biggest couple of them that is also being compared to PayPal and Visa. So I, this is uh, really helpful for me to get an idea of how fast something actually is. Uh, they don't have Polygon on here, but Polygon is right about 65,000 transactions per second. It's a little bit less than that. Uh, at the very slow end of the spectrum, we have Bitcoin at 10, Ethereum at 20, PayPal at a paltry 193 transactions per second. And then we have Avalanche here at 4,500, which is pretty good. That's still very fast. Um, but really nothing in comparison to Solana and Polygon, which are both around 65,000. And then we have this Ethereum 2.0 question mark. Uh, they're saying that uh, they, they're expecting around 100,000 transactions per second on Ethereum 2.0. Uh, we will certainly have to see because Ethereum 2.0 is not out yet. So I'll give a point each to Solana and Poly there. AVAX still with zero points. And now we have a couple of comparison charts. So this one is ETH, Solana, and Polygon. And then I had to find a different one. See, I haven't I haven't found any anything out there that is comparing all three chains. And really Polygon is a layer two, it's not its own chain. So we have to kind of hodgepodge all of these together to get a good idea of how each of these stack up against one another. Uh, Polygon is great because it supports Solidity. Avalanche also supports Solidity for the programming language, which is also the only programming language for Ethereum, uh, which is good because you're gonna get a lot more developers that know uh, Solidity versus Rust, which is the programming language of Solana. And this is where I got the 65,000 transactions per second for this. So Solana, Polygon, and 
Avalanche are all proof of stake. So we got a three-way tie going there. So we're going to go over a little bit of this article from 101 blockchains to give us a little bit of a better idea of the differences between proof of stake and proof of work and really what the transaction speeds mean for all three protocols here. So first we're going to go over the consensus mechanism, which is this line here. And so the consensus mechanism is a mandatory procedure followed by all blockchain nodes to reach agreements regarding the present state of the network. Ethereum, slow ass Ethereum leverages proof of work. Uh, the consensus mechanism drawing power from multiple miners worldwide participating actively in the consensus. So proof of work consensus demands high computing power, thereby restricting the scope of participation for the users. Even if proof of work helps ensuring security and complete decentralization for ETH, it suffers from concerns of reduced performance and uh, it requires quite a bit of energy. That is one of the main critiques of cryptocurrency as a whole is the sheer amount of power that it takes to keep the network uh, running. And Polygon leverages a combination of technologies for offering a fast blockchain network alongside linking to the main ETH network. This is a huge plus for Polygon because it allows you to have faster transaction speeds and lower gas fees while still using the uh, most of the dApps and things like that that are on ETH. The blockchain network leverages proof of stake consensus mechanism uh, for securing the network and creating new MATIC tokens. Therefore, you can also earn rewards in the form of MATIC tokens by staking on the Polygon network. The Solana blockchain brings something unique to the table in terms of the consensus mechanism that it utilizes. The network utilizes an array or a list of computations in order to determine the ideal method for verification of the time gap between two different events. Interestingly, Solana blockchain leverages one cryptographically secure function to facilitate output prediction rather than relying on the proof of work consensus. The blockchain platform uses a hybrid consensus mechanism that features the best of proof of stake as well as proof of work history or proof of history so the hybrid consensus on the solana blockchain enables better flexibility for arranging the order of transactions as a result the consensus mechanism of the blockchain platform empowers it to carry out almost 50,000 transactions every second and we can contrast that with avalanche avalanche also uses the proof of stake consensus mechanism that uh, Polygon and Solana use. So we get points for all three there for the same consensus mechanism. And so in terms of building dApps, uh, Solidity is really the way to go for blockchain development. Uh, you're going to find the majority of developers using Solidity exclusively, although there, there are a growing number of devs that are, you know, learning how to use Rust with the rise of Solana. So I'm on Avalanche's site down here, they're talking about how Avalanche is Solidity compatible. So you don't need uh, any extra tools. You can use uh, Remix, Truffle, Tenderly, right out of the box with Avalanche. All you gotta do is designate that it is a WAVAX contract, which would be a wrapped AVAX contract. This is uh, some sample smart contract code there. So I know Polygon is Ethereum virtual machine compatible. Aval Avalanche runs Avalanche virtual machines, which are also EVM compatible. And Avalanche also has the, Av the Avalanche bridge, which enables uh, easy transfers of Avalanche and Ethereum assets. So Polygon also has a bridge. Solana does not bridge to Ethereum. So we got points for AVAX and Poly, and we'll give I don't know, maybe another point to AVAX and Poly for being sol uh, Solidity compatible. And as far as the fees required to operate on any of these, it's all basically negligible. Uh, the only thing with Polygon is an also Avalanche. The fees to convert Ethereum to Avalanche and Polygon are both pretty high and the time it takes to use the bridge is quite long. But you can just buy AVAX Poly and Solana just straight on exchanges. And so I want to hop over to dapradar.com. It is a basically a dap tracking site. 
So here we have all of the Polygon dApps right now, and it's sorted by the number of users. The highest number of users on a dApp for Polygon is 207.8 thousand, and we have, let's see here, 35 pages of dApps on here. So for a total of 851 Polygon dApps, so that is quite a bit. Next we'll check out Avalanche. So number one dApp on here in terms of number of users, 220.57K, so a little bit more than Poly. But let's check out total number, 208. So uh, not as many applications as Poly, so we'll give a slight edge to Polygon there. And then for Solana now, highest number is... 218.86 thousand in terms of number of users on Magic Eden. That is the probably the biggest uh, NFT marketplace. That's the one I use most for any uh, Solana-based NFTs. And in terms of number of dApps on here, we only have 51. So we'll go point for Poly. So Poly right now has the greatest number of dApps and almost the same number of active users on their highest, most used dApp. So we'll give them the slight edge there. Next, we will go into security. So this in terms of hacks and glitches, Solana is pretty bad. They had a Solana hack that wiped out $320 million of wealth and they had the network freeze, which they had to stop the entire network. Uh, so not very good there. Polygon also just had a hack on uh, January 3rd that resulted in 801,601 Matic tokens being stolen, uh, which is a dollar amount of almost $2 million. And so those are two assaults on the network Avalanche has not had any hacks on its network, but it did have a one of their DeFi apps, uh, V Finance. So this is not really a knock on Avalanche. So I'll give them a point there. So right now, Solana's at three, Poly, or Polygon is at five, and Avax is at four. V Finance got absolutely hosed for thirty-five million uh, worth of Bitcoin and Ether. Again, this is a dApp built on Avalanche, not Avalanche itself, but uh, sucks to suck for V Finance. And so the last thing, we're pretty much done with this on here. Again, this is going to be just a not super in-depth uh, comparison because I want to keep this to under three hours. But last thing we're going over is community. And the way I'm doing that is basically basing it on Twitter followers. And so Avalanche right now has 623,000. Solana's got 1.5 million and Polygon has 1.3 million. So we can go points to Solana and Poly for being both over a million followers. Now, in terms of any of these three actually overtaking Ethereum in terms of adoption and uh, functionality, and obviously market cap. Uh, I don't see any of these three overtaking ETH anytime soon. Uh, Ethereum is just too big and too widespread, although it does kind of fucking suck. So one of these is going to really have to kind of go parabolic in terms of adoption. I know there's over 10 million wallets that hold Ethereum right now. And if you include NFTs into that, because they are ERC721 tokens, or at least the Ethereum ones are, but if you include the ERC721 NFTs, there's over 27 million wallets for that, that hold ERC721 NFTs. Solana's only got 2 million right now. Polygon has less than that, although they are growing pretty quickly. And Avalanche, I think, let's see. Avalanche is under a million in terms of monthly active wallets. So they are in last place, but they are growing the fastest. I'll give them that. So in terms of which one has maybe the best shot of overtaking Ethereum, I'm going to give the 
edge here to Polygon because it is essentially, it is linked so closely to Ethereum in, in that it is just a layer two and it is working to kind of scale on top of what is already built with Ethereum. I think that Poly has the best chance to, to gain the widest uh, reach in terms of number of wallets within the next year. All three are definitely good bets in terms of holding and actually using them for stuff. Uh, Ethereum, not the most fun to use right now. Uh, it's kind of more of a buy and hold for me. Um, I mean, I use, use to buy NFTs, but I usually have to, you know, kind of wait, kind of go on coin market cap and refresh the page. See the Ethereum gas right now is at 44 Gwei. Uh, a lot of times it is well into the hundreds. So you have to kind of wait until your the price of gas is less than the cost of the NFT that you're trying to buy. But uh, that is pretty much all I got for you on this, guys. I hope this helps. Uh, it took me a little while to put to put this together. Uh, but as always, guys, please make sure you are subscribed to the channel for more updates on Ethereum, Polygon, Solana, and Avalanche, as well as other NFTs, stocks, and tokens we like. And I thank you guys so much for watching this far. I know this is going to be a little bit of a longer one, and I will see you guys in the next video.